What is going on, everybody? This is Jay Zimmer coming at you with another 2K21 playoffs simulation. If you don't know what we do around here, we do not do the regular 2K21 franchise simulations for these playoffs. I like to bring it to the blacktop and simply watch the computer play against each other. I try to cut it as best as I can to make it as entertaining as possible. If you do have any feedback on the cuts, any and all would be greatly appreciated. I think it's a little more fun. Uh, it gets you some of the park dribble moves, layups, uh, dunks, shooting reactions. Uh, I just overall find it more enjoyable. And it's, it's a fun little, you know, everyone's doing 2K21 franchise simulations. It's just a little bit different. With that being said, this matchup is the Utah Jazz against the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, by now, we've seen a couple games go by. Obviously, we saw the Grizzlies take that game one in the actual playoffs. And that probably took a lot of people by surprise. I mean, most people were surprised the Grizzlies were even able to beat the very injured Warriors. Uh, but when you think about it, the Grizzlies have a lot more depth than I think most people give them credit. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about bench depth later on in the video. I just want to explain uh, a little more about what is going on in the background. So the way I like to do it is a best of three series. Uh, in the future, if you do want best of five or best of seven, feel free to let me know. Uh, this way I can just make it, you know, not too, too long, not too, too short. Uh, just a, f a fairly reasonable length, in my opinion. Each game is to 11. Again, I am willing to change that as well. I just feel that is best for this length of video. So yeah, talking a bit more about the specific matchup. I mean, I think it's a better matchup than most people would assume. Obviously, one seed, eight seed, we all expect the Jazz to take the series, and I also expect the Jazz to take the series. But a lot of people aren't realizing that the Grizzlies have good size. So obviously the Jazz have Rudy Gobert, seven foot one, uh, monster of a center. But their next tallest player in their starting lineup is Joe Ingles, who's not exactly much of an athlete at six seven, versus the mentally <laughs> mentally. The Memphis Grizzlies have both Jaron Jackson Jr. and Valanciunas, who are both 6'11", pushing 7 feet. And I know that doesn't seem like much, but when you think about it, and you'll probably see a lot in this video, offensive rebounds could play more of a factor for the Grizzlies than one may expect. The thing is, Rudy Gobert is obviously so dominant that he may be able to negate any and all size that those two players uh, could provide. So that's why I see that matchup being being great. And then with regards to Donovan Mitchell against Ja, I mean, they're both really athletic, both shooters, both not not the tallest guys, but I think the back and forth between them is going to be great. And then obviously on the Jazz, they also have Mike Connolly, who's just a veteran playmaker, shooter, uh, can do a lot. Um, so yeah, I think the matchup's going to be great. I'm, before talking about the benches, I think I'm going to jump in. I like to jump in when the game is getting close to the end. It looks like it's 8 to 10 right now. These are to 11, like I mentioned before. It looks like the Jazz have the lead in this first game, so a little different than, than the real-life playoffs. Uh, but yeah, 8 to 10, we have the Jazz with the ball. They have a chance to seal it. Um, if you're wondering, I've talked about it in previous videos of how I do, or how I could potentially do live commentaries. This is sort of how that would go. Um, Jaw coming up the court, so just let me know if you would prefer that in the future. Looking around, passes off to Valanciunas, back to Jaw, still looking around, not sure what's, what he's going to do with the ball. This is sort of a, they need to get a basket here to at least get a little closer, 8 to 9, or 10 to 9, they do get a little closer. And then with the turnover to Clark, he had Jaw on the break, and he's wide open. Shot a little late there, but he, he gets it to fall, 10-10, highly contested shot. And now it looks like we're going into a bit of overtime, Norm especially when it comes to overtime. I like it just to play out whether, if there's misses, if there's ridiculous shots. I don't want uh, the cuts to be to be ruining uh, the overtime experience. We have Mitchell with the ball, long three, just misses it. Anderson with the rebound, pushing it up the court to Jaw. 
Again, uh, this is blacktop rule, so it is win by two, and Jaw just gets absolutely rejected right there. Connolly with the rebound, pushing it up to Mitchell. Over to Ingles. That could be game. That probably should be game, but Ingles, of all people, is missing a wide-open corner three. You don't expect him to miss that very much, but now the Grizzlies with another chance to take the lead, potentially take the game, but another block. The Grizzlies are just turning it over, seeming like each time they have the ball. Connolly pushing it up, and another block out of bounds. Neither team can get anything to fall right now. Mitchell with the ball, looking what he can find. Another really poor layup, but they get the offensive rebound, and another poor, I don't know what that was. How many blocks in a row are we seeing right now? And another awful shot, but another offensive rebound. Another <laughs> awful shot and another offense. What is going on right now? But finally, Favors is able to get the put back dunk. I don't know what the hell we were just watching. I'm probably going to have to make a YouTube short out of that. Because that was just absolute... I don't even know what to say about that. But they, the Jazz are now up 10-11. to 11. <sighs> The Grizzlies have a chance to tie it up again. I'm out of breath with that. Potentially take the lead with a three-pointer. And a nice little back cut. But Ingles with the defense... Up to Connolly, a nice little mid-range, and that is game. What a wild way to finish that first game. Um, wow, I was not necessarily expecting that, but we'll quickly look at the stats. Mitchell, 7 for 22, not a great shooting per performance, but he was able to put up 9 out of the 11 points. Overall, pretty poor shooting performance for both sides. Ja, 5 for 14, 3 for 6, Valachunas. A little better shooting, it looks like, for the Grizzlies. Looking at the team comparison... Uh, maybe not. Oh, no, no, yeah, 30% to 39%. It was just those offensive rebounds. So maybe what I was saying beforehand about the size isn't necessarily true. Rudy Gobert just being a menace on the boards. But, yeah, we're going to jump in. Jump in? What did I even just say? We're going to jump in to the next game. Uh, I think that was Val Tunis, of all people, starting us off with a nice three-pointer. Uh, so the Grizzlies coming out. Um... Two to one, and I guess now with <laughs> four just misses and offensive rebounds, three to one, Grizzlies. I guess now is as good of a time as any with Ingles hopefully being able to hit a wide open shot. There you go, three three. Maybe we'll have another really close game, but jumping into the bench depth like I wanted to talk about before. So when we talk about the Utah Jazz, obviously we've got Bogdanovich, Ilyasova, uh, O'Neal, Nyang. I mean, we have decent bench depth, but in my opinion, the Grizzlies having Grayson Allen, Tillman, Melton, Brooks, Desmond Bain, Justin Winslow, Tyrus Jones, um, overall, that's just a lot of depth. I mean, they're probably not going to go into a 10, 11, 12 man. I mean, they're not going to go into a 10, 11, 12 man rotation, uh, but it really just takes one injury. We know Donovan Mitchell's prone to injury. Um, to change the series, obviously it's not looking great uh, for the Grizzlies right now as the uh, as the playoffs continue. Uh, the series at the point of me recording this is three to one Utah Jazz, so that's obviously tough to come back from. But we have seen that happen before. I mean, we've never seen a 3-0 comeback, but 3-1 is possible. So. We'll just have to see what happens. Uh, but with regard, obviously 2K ratings are not uh, <laughs> the most accurate in the world, I guess you can say. But in terms of the bench step for the Jazz, you have a 79 all the way to a 72 at the 11th spot. And with the Grizzlies, you have a 78 all the way to get to a 72 would be the 14th man on the roster. 75 is still 13, so... The bench depth is there. Uh, in this game, though, I'm going to hop in real quick because it looks like we're close to a fairly quick win for the Grizzlies. To up 10-6, and they have the ball. Valanciunas with the ball. Morant now with the ball. Takes a pretty contested deep three, but he hits it. And good thing I jumped in right now, right there because just like that, it is tied up 1-1. We'll quickly look at the stats. Gobert played well. Mitchell, again, off shooting. Connolly in favor is not really doing much. Jumping over, though, John Morant, 4 for 5, extremely efficient, 2 for 4, 2 for 2, 2 for 2. So those shooting percentages are going to be ridiculous. 77% is absolutely ridiculous, 100% from 3 versus 42% and 25%. Not bad shooting 
Uh, honestly, pretty realistic shooting from the Jazz, but the Grizzlies were able to take game two. So we are going to hop right into game three. Starting off with Gobert just bullying Morant. I mean, that's a that's a matchup that I'm sure the Jazz would like to get as frequently as possible. Although Gobert isn't really known for his scoring, as we all know. And as we've even seen in this series, I mean, as he's about to score again, I guess. <laughs> But with the offensive rebound, because I was about to say his rebounding has really shown in this series, offensive rebounding specifically. I mean, that first game easily could have gone to the Grizzlies if they didn't have that many more second chance points. Uh, passing out to Jackson Jr. with a nice little floater. So if you have made it this far into the video, what do you think this series is going to end up being? Do you think... The Jazz are going to take care of business 4-1. Do you think the, Grizz, the Grizzlies the Grizzlies, do you think the Grizzlies can steal one more game? Uh, in my opinion, I see this going to a six-game series. I do think the Grizzlies are going to steal one more game. Uh, but that's going to be it with a mean putback dunk right there. Uh, but yeah, what, what are your guesses? I mean, John Morant has been playing out of his mind. I love to see what he's been able to do. In my opinion, during the regular season, obviously people are going to constantly compare Zion and Ja, probably for the rest of their, definitely for the rest of their careers. Even though they're really good friends, they played with each other way back in the day in uh, AAU times, I believe it was. Or maybe they were on the same high school team or something, I can't remember specifically. Um, obviously Zion has not been able to show what he's been, or what he can do. Uh, come playoffs yet, I think he had an unbelievable regular season. I mean, he's putting up interior numbers that we haven't seen since Shaquille O'Neal and that's an insane compliment. Ja at the same time has been putting up ridiculous numbers this season. Not necessarily too crazy during the regular season although we did see some shiny moments but these playoffs have shown this guy is built different. He can put the ball in the basket when it matters most. Literally when it matters most uh, which is what you love to see from these young guys. Across the league I think we can all tell that the future of the league is bright. Uh, obviously, I already mentioned Ja, Zion. Um, Trey Young has been going <laughs> insane uh, this series. Jason Tatum, obviously, I, I'm a huge Celtics fan. Uh, even though the Celtics did just get sent home. Was that last night? Yeah, I believe that was last night. I think our future is really bright. Jalen Brown, I... I love it. Uh, I love all the young guys in the NBA. I'm super excited to see what they can do. I think I might do one of these uh, series. We'll have the uh, the young guys versus the old heads. Obviously, I'm not going to do just the straight up youngest guys versus just the straight up oldest guys. I think I will do like one of the mean park dunk right there. See, that's why I like uh, I like throwing this these simulations in the black tub. I don't know. I think that's fun. And now it's tied up. So. I guess I'll talk more about future videos in a different video because we have it tied up 9-9. This is do or die. This is go home or move on with another rough layup. We've seen a lot of very questionable shot attempts in this matchup, in this series. But we have the Jazz with the ball over to Ingles. Could potentially shoot right about now, but he's not going to. Over to Gobert. Back to Ingles. Moving with a old man slow <laughs> spin movement. Turns it over. Like I said, Ingles is not the most athletic. I mean, he would destroy me in basketball. Not the most athletic guy in the world. And he's now cold. But he has got the rebound and bring the ball back up the court after the Grizzlies were unable to do much with it. Connolly now with the ball. Probably a more, real, more realistic and much preferred guy to have the ball. And Ingles, I don't know if you saw that, but he made an actual great move to get wide open from the three. So they could have had it right there. But instead, Gobert takes a... <laughs> A highly questionable shot. This is sort of why I do the cuts. And then we have, who was that? I don't even see who that was taking another questionable shot. So yeah, this is why I do the cuts, just because I don't think you guys want to see this during the whole game. It has to do with shot tendencies. I've mentioned this in the first video, which by the way, if you do want to see more of these videos, I'll put the link to the series, the playlist, uh, in the description. Uh, I've done it. This is the final for the... Uh, for the first round of the playoffs, so any of the matchups you want to see, I have a video on. If you do like this, uh, I, going along with that, if you do like this, feel free to rate. And if you want to see these videos in the future, feel free to subscribe. Don't have to if you don't want to, of course. It would mean a lot to me. However, so the Grizzlies, we've seen a lot of back and forth in terms of terrible shooting. 
in the past little bit, and that continues. Grizzly is not able to do anything with it again, but the Utah Jazz pushing up the court. Hopefully something can happen this time around, and it's another turnover. So we're going to we're gonna continue this on. Uh, Grizzlies with the ball now. We'll see if we can't get a couple more turnovers, and I, I don't even know what I'm watching at this point, but we pass it out to Mitchell, and that might be game. All right, that was the most disgusting way to end such a good series, but that's going to do it. Mitchell with a clutch shot, jumping in 6 for 15. Not the most clutch shooting throughout the entire series, but they do get it done. On the other side, 3 for 10 for Jaw. That's not going to get it done. In terms of the overall, 39% to 40%, 50 to 67. So really close shooting splits, but the Grizzlies were unable to do that. That does it for this video, guys. Like I said, if you do want to see more like this, please subscribe. You don't have to if you don't want to. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys do have a great day. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye.